Good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer. I thought I'd choose something different for us to read this morning. When I was a curate in Manchester, I remember going one day to see my spiritual director and I had a real sense where I wasn't quite sure what I was meant to be doing. And my spiritual director at the time gave me this book called The Light Invisible. It's an old book that is no longer in print and he directed me to read something called In the Convent Chapel. And over the next three mornings, I'm going to read this short story about uh, a nun who lived in a solitary convent. And it really helped me and gave me a sense of purpose and meaning in those times when I wasn't quite sure what I was meant to do. So I'm going to begin this morning by reading this short story in the convent chapel. Some years ago, I took my annual holiday in the form of a solitary walking tour. I will not tell you where I went, as there are others concerned in this story who may dislike intensely to be publicly spoken of in the way that I shall have to speak of them. But it is sure enough to say that I came at last to a small town towards sunset. My object in coming to this place was to visit a convent of enclosed nuns whose reputation for holiness was very great. I carried with me a letter of introduction to the Reverend Mother, which I knew would admit me to the chapel. I left my bag at the inn and then walked down to the convent which stood a little way out of town. The lay sister who opened the door to me asked me to come into the parlour while she told the Reverend Mother, and after waiting a few minutes in the prim room with its beeswaxed floor and its religious engravings and objects, a wonderfully dignified old lady with a quiet wrinkled face came in with my letter open in her hand. We talked a few minutes about various things and I had a glass of cowslip wine in a thick-lipped wine glass. She told me that the convent was a very ancient foundation that had been a country house ever since the dissolution of the religious houses until about 20 years ago, when it had been acquired for the community. There still remained of the old buildings part of the cloisters, which the south transept of the old church, which was now the chapel. The hole with a wall or two forming the courtyard through which I had come lay behind the house, of which there was a garden to which there was a window through the parlour. As I sat I could see a black cross or two marking the nun's graveyard. I made inquiries as to the way the time of the community was spent. Our object, said the old lady, is perpetual intercession. We have great joy of the blessed sacrament amongst us in the chapel, and except during the choir offices and mass, there is always a nun kneeling before it. We look after one or two ladies who are incurably ill, who have come to the end of their days with us, and we make our living by embroidery. I asked how it was that she could receive strangers if the order was an enclosed one. The lay sisters and myself alone can receive strangers, but we find that necessary. After a little while I talked about whether I might see the chapel, and she took me out into the courtyard immediately. As we walked across the grass, she pointed out to me the cloisters, now built up into a corridor, and the long ruined wall of the old nave which formed one side of the quadrangle. A grave-faced and stout collie dog had joined us at the door, and we three went together slowly towards the door in the centre of the west wall of the restored transept. The evening sun lay golden on the wall before us, and on the ruined base of the central tower of the old church round the jackdaws wheeled and croaked. The old priest broke off and turned to me, with his eyes burning. What a marvellous thing the religious life is, he said, and above all, the contemplative life. Here were these nuns, as no doubt they and their younger sisters are still, without one single thing in the world's opinion makes life worth living. We will hear more from the convent chapel tomorrow. So as we come into God's presence afresh this morning, let's just take a moment of quiet 
bringing before the Lord our cares, our anxieties and our prayers. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O come, let us sing to the Lord, let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving, and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. This morning's psalm is Psalm 89. My song shall be always of the loving kindness of the Lord. With my mouth will I proclaim your faithfulness throughout all generations. I will declare that your love is established forever, for you have set your foundations as firm as the heavens. For you said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. Your seed will I establish forever, and build up your throne for all generations. The heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, and your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who among the clouds can be compared to the Lord, who is like the Lord among the hosts of heaven? A God feared in the council of the holy ones, great and terrible above those round about him. Who is like you, Lord God of hosts? Mighty Lord, your faithfulness is all around you. You rule the raging of the sea. You still its waves when they rise. You crushed Rahab with a deadly wound and scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. Yours are the heavens, the earth also is yours. You established the world and all that fills it. You created the north and the south. Tabor and Hermon rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm, Lord, and strong is your hand and high is your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before your face. Happy are the people who know the shout of triumph. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. In your name they rejoice all the day long and are exalted in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength and in your favour you lift up our heads. Truly the Lord is our shield, the Holy One of Israel, our King. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is taken from Genesis chapter 43 and begins as we left off yesterday at verse 16. When Joseph saw Jen Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Take these men to my home and slaughter an animal and make ready for these men will dine with me at noon. Then the man did as Joseph ordered and the man brought the men into Joseph's house. Now the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house, and they said, It is because of the money which was returned in our sacks the first time that we are brought in, so that he may make a case against us and seize us to take us as slaves with our donkeys. When they drew near to the steward of Joseph's house, they talked with him at the door. 
And they said, Sir, we indeed came down the first time to buy food. But it happened when we came to the encampment that we opened our sacks, and there each man's money was in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight, but we have brought it back in our hand. And we have brought down other money in our hands to buy food, but we do not know who put the money back in our sacks. But he said, Peace be with you. Do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. Then he brought Simeon out to them. So the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water. And they washed their feet and gave their donkeys feed. Then they made the present ready for Joseph's coming at noon. For they heard that they would eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house and bowed before him to the earth. Then they asked him about their well-being, and they said, Is your father well? The old man of whom you spoke, is he still alive? And they answered, Your servant, our father, is in good health. He is still alive. And they bowed their heads down and prostrated themselves. Then he lifted his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son. And he said, Is this your younger brother of whom you spoke to me? And he said, God be gracious to you, my son. Rise up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day he will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the sunrise. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, beginning at verse 18. If the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you too. But all these things they will do to you because of my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. And yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that they have offered God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father or me. But these things I have told you, 
that when the time comes, you remem may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning, because I am with you. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord, of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. And we say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So let us pray. Today, Lord, we thank you for those whose influence has led us to worship you this morning. We remember family members, Sunday school teachers, church leaders, friends and colleagues who have encouraged us to follow in the way of Jesus. While at this time we are apart from one another, we give thanks for the fellowship which we receive from our brothers and sisters in the various churches that support us. As we seek to put our faith into practice in our daily lives, strengthen us so that we, in turn, may be an encouragement to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own church. Keep before us your vision and give us a clear understanding of the work you have set before us and a fresh commitment to your service, whatever context we find ourselves in. Give wisdom to our leaders, especially our bishops, Christopher and Jonathan, and the leadership teams throughout Southwark Diocese, that we may grow in faith, hope and love. We thank you, Lord, that in a world where there are many disagreements, your gospel comes to break down the barriers that divide, bringing friendship that extends across all boundaries because of our common faith in Jesus Christ. We pray today, Lord, for your church in other countries where governments are hostile to Christianity. Give your people courage and endurance especially in the face of opposition. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord, for those who are elderly, especially those who have become frail and weak, those whose eyesight is failing, those who find it difficult to hear. We pray for all those who feel anxious, lonely and cut off at this time. Teach us to be watchful for the needs of those who are vulnerable, 
loving and serving them as honoured members of your family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord, for people who are ill, in hospitals, at home, or wherever they may be. Give them courage, hope and peace, and the knowledge that you are present with them. And in this moment of quiet, we name those especially dear to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord, for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them. Give to them the strong comfort which no one else can give. And let them know, please, the comforting power of the resurrection of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we now pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so, my friends, whatever you are doing today, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you and all those you love his peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.